All right, Shalom. This is a hard one by Yasha Allah of the Lions Day Camp. I want to say, Kal Halayim, Layahawa, by Hashem Yahushai, by Hashem Harakar Kodash, Mahamah. Double honor to the elder apostles of GMS and the elders. Shalom to you, Akim, Nagwati, my children, that believe in sincerity and truth around the four corners of the earth. Yeah, man, you got, um, with it. Now, I want to get into something dealing with, um, this, this debt repayment deadline that's um, happening tomorrow or today, was, um, which would be Thursday. Uh, they have something called um, Evergrande, which is a real estate company over there in China. All right. Now, if you go to. Uh, where is that? All right, you have something here called the Global 2000. All right, Forbes Global Global 2000. It says, how the world's biggest public companies endured the, pan the pandemic. Now, it says, um, so this is a, a list of the leading companies and leading governments upon the earth. Let's look and see who who's the top one. Right here it says what? The top one is um from China. And it says um the I C B C basically the Bank of China. That's the top company on the earth right now. And then you have JP Morgan Chase. All right, now this this is talking about on a world scale. And then you have something called the world debt. Uh, world debt uh, sheet and that's what they're moving towards they, they're trying to move everything to a world issue you know or or local problems that's handled world uh, worldly all right with world um, companies that way yeah Pamela Kamala whatever her name is Kamala uh, Harris she came out recently with um, an interview Speaking and saying, um, all right, she kept saying they're entering, they're entering a new era, all right, to where the world, she said, she said, when they look back on this, this great reset, they'll see that the world came together in a, in a, uh, in a crisis, all right, so that's what this is about, it's all about that new world order, it's, it's clear. It's, you know, it's, it's clear what they're doing. So now I think it's number 122, I think it was. We'll go down real quick. Oh, they don't have it on here. I think it's a global 3000. The global, the global 300 has the list with the um, real estate company called Evergrande. All right, and I think they're like number 122 on the list. All right, so this is the topic. It says Evergrande stock surges. All right, it says Evergrande stock surges even as debt repayment deadline approaches. All right, so the debt repayment deadline, I think it's tomorrow. I think it's Thursday. Just like America has a debt ceiling that they're trying to say, they're not going to be able to move it up one more time. All right, America's, uh, America's debt ceiling. Uh, they're going to be talking about that soon. And what's going to happen is either if the, if, if the, um, the Evergrande company crashes or uh, America defaults on its, on its debt or this major company that has $300 billion worth of debt since the company uh, Evergrande was established, they uh, they started off with debt, just borrowing money, borrowing money, all the way up to three hundred billion. So to default on that, on the world scale or data sheet of debt, you know that would be a heavy um, weight to carry. That would tip the scale, and what they call an event. See that? Remember Event 201? When they had this whole situation happen where they're forcing mandates and lockdowns and then it ends in a 
a, uh, an event that's going to happen. And I believe it's going to be the crash, the, the economy. But they're going to tell people they can't pay their pensions back. All right. And they're going to start moving towards uh, the mark of the beast. All right. So now let's read this topic a little bit. All right. Because, um, you know, China is Moab. It says Hong Kong CNN business. It's crunch time for China. China's heavily indebted Evergrande group. All right. See, America has laid itself with thick clay, according to Habakkuk chapter two. And then they're not going to, they're not going to be able to pay back their debt. I think, um, I forgot what America's uh, debt uh, level is today, but um, I haven't looked at the debt clock in a long time. Evergrande is due, Evergrande is due to pay 83.5 million worth of, if it's worth of interest on a dollar denominated bond, man. All right, so they got to pay it in dollars. And they might not pay it. They might just say, you know what? Nah, we're not going to pay it. We don't want to pay that. All right, so if they don't pay it, it's going to crash that company, which could ultimately uh, crash other companies around the world. All right, especially here in America. That's, that's how serious this is. So they're going to use this to blame it on China. All right. Um, now it says, see, and what China can do is they can play a dirty game because they have their currency, the yuan, backed by gold and uh, oil and oil. See, two different uh, commodities. Now, they could easily say, you know what, L let it crash. So that way, that it it would be a true global reset, to where all the countries got to reset their currencies to the true value that it is. All right, right now, the dollar is operating off a of de facto, meaning everybody's forced to invest in it because it's the world currency. All right, and there's still money to be made from these companies, even though they're in default. There's still money to be made on Wall Street. You know, the company's still thriving. But the GD the, on the back end, the debt is surpassing their GDP, what, they, what they're bringing in. All right, so um, what is this? All right, so China could play a dirty game. To where they say, hey, man, yeah, let's go ahead and reset everybody's currencies to the true value that it is. That will cut America out. America has nothing backing that dollar. Petrodollar is done. It's done. So what are they going to back the dollar by? You know, um, so what they're going to have to do is what? They're going, to, they're going to, America's going to be forced. I mean, if anything happens with the economies around the world, America going to be the main one that loses out, Babylon. Because uh, America can't pay that debt back, man. All right, China can pay it back. They got an option like, should we pay it or should we not? See that? <laughs> and we're going to know by today, which is Thursday. Um if Evergrande is going to default on that debt. And the word default means they can't pay the debt back. They're not going to pay it back or they can't. All right, so what will happen is all the nations will adjust their currencies to its um, true status. Um, uh, the dollar is operating because everybody's buying it around the world as a reserve currency or they still have it on reserve or they have to keep buying dollars to manage their dollar, their dollar reserves that they have in, in their banks and also um, within the IMF, all right? What's going to happen is America is going to be forced into, by Europe, right? The IMF, International Monetary Fund, they're going to be forced to um, regulate its currency to its true status. And it's going to be 
beyond zero or negative. And what's going to happen is they're going to have to move to a new currency, a digital form of the dollar. That's going to shock everybody. Anybody that's dealing in dollars, fiat, paper money, you know, debit cards, whatever, it's going to be done. All right, it's going to, they're going to move to something called a digital dollar. And they're going to get it within the, uh, I said it years ago, they're going to get it within the, the SDR basket, special drawing rights, to where America can, can establish its own form of the dollar since it's the world currency. See that? So they're not going to get rid of the dollar. They're going to get rid of the paper form of it. All right? So that's what all this is about. It's a domino effect, a chain reaction that's going to happen from... Um, this China situation today. And what's going to happen is all the markets are being looked at with a magnifying glass. If Evergrande doesn't crash, next thing you know, you're going to hear about America and their debt ceiling that's, that's quickly approaching to where the Fed's got to make a choice to increase the debt ceiling, move it up, saying, hey, you, right, you can owe me more. <laughs> right? Or they're going to say, yo, that's it. You can't pay it out no more. We're not responsible for this to to pay this debt anymore. To give you QE one, QE two, QE three, or whatever, quantitative easing, printing money out of thin air. And what they're gonna say is, America gotta make that choice. They're gonna say, Hey, America, you gotta make the choice, man. Special drawing rights or what? <laughs> you know. So that's what this is about. It's gonna give everybody a little. Um, insight or clarity on what's going on with this Evergrande stock uh, possible crash today. It could crash. All right. And they're not really putting it out there. They're kind of straddling the fence on putting the information out there. I'm going to read a little bit more information on this. It says, um, <clears throat> the settlement is a lot better after the news from yesterday, said Julian Evans Pritchard, senior Chinese, um, China economist of capital economics. But the outlook for the offshore bank bond payment still remains uncertain, and Evergrande is a long way from resolving its problems. We will see Evergrande make more defaults. See that? It's not going to be able to pay back a lot of the debt that it has. But today they're going to make it seem like it. You know, if we're paying attention to it. We on it. If we, if we got it. We're going to fix it. And it says, um, but ultimately it's not going to be able to pay it. They're not going to pay it back. Even if it avoids defaulting the day, today, the situation is not getting better unless the government steps in. All right. So the basic government takeover. Got these companies that can't pay their debt back. Um, everything's going to be government regulated. Real soon in America, you're going to have government food, government uh, uh, regulated jobs, uh, entertainment regulated by the government. Whatever you call it, it's going to be government regulated. Government this, government rations at the shelf, food, you know. Um, it says Chinese as Chinese estates, the second largest shareholder of Evergrande and a longtime business ally of the company, said Thursday in a stock exchange filing that it has already sold Evergrande shares worth 246.5 million Hong Kong dollars in the past few weeks. All right. So they they are selling off. All these companies are moving away from and having a sell off. All right, what does that mean? I mean, all these investors are afraid of it and they're running from it. That's a collapse. That's a crash of that company, and they're gonna do the same thing with the dollar. All right. All right. Evergrande is stumbling. Under 300 billion worth of debt, that's what I said earlier, which is widely held by Chinese financial institutions, retail investors, 
home buyers and its suppliers in construction materials and design as industries. Foreign investors also hold some of its debt. Over the last few weeks, the company warned investors twice that it could default if it's unable to raise money quickly. All right. It is not clear whether the company will actually default or whether Beijing will intervene and orchestrate some type of reconstructing to contain the fallout of the financial system and the broader Chinese economy. And we know that China had a lot of uh, crashes, and especially in the 1950s, through, due to their um, faulty economic strategies. All right. But now America's moving in that way. Um, all right, because they're not really talking about it on the news. All they're talking about is a damn pandemic. All right. And, and pumping their agenda into people's minds, brainwashing people, and they're putting their spell on everybody. But what's creeping up is uh, this default that could happen. All right, or this, or this crash. Check this out. What the federal debt ceiling showdown could mean for you. And this is September 20, 2021. It says, um, the clock is ticking on the federal debt ceiling. Woo. The clock is ticking on the federal debt ceiling, man. Okay, I like that one. The clock is ticking, you know, the debt clock. Lawmakers have until the end of this month to raise the debt limit once again. See, they're not really talking about it. They're talking about China when the, the problem is going to be right here at home in America. China can pay us debt. There's no problem. They're going to just give it a bailout. But anything that happens on the world, it's going to affect America. The, the debt balance sheet, the world balance sheet of debt. All right. It's going to cause everybody to uh, uh, default on their payments, regulate their currencies, reevaluate their currencies, and they're going to see that America has no currency. You know, all them dollars going to come home to roost. All right. It says lawmakers have until the end of this month, so the end of September. Sheesh, that's like a few days to raise the debt limit once again. And we're going to hear about this man on the news. In a Wall Street Journal um, s Sunday, Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said failing to act could spark an economic catastrophe. <sighs> failing to act could cause a economic catastrophe. And you know Esau likes bringing order out of chaos. All right. So they could use this one. This could be it. To where they just don't raise the debt ceiling. And the dollar crashes. Everything crashes. This could be it man. Yeah how right is. Um, this is while the, while the legal cap on how much the U.S. can borrow doesn't impact what consumers can spend, all right? If Congress can't reach a deal on a new debt limit before October, it will put a stranglehold on everything from government payments to the ability to borrow, she cautions. Man. Mm. Everything crashes. Government funding, companies going to start crashing, man. Okay. Um, it'll be an economic crash as well. In a matter of days. <sighs> what? Let me read this, man. Let me read this. It says, in a matter of days from October, right? October 1st. In a matter of days, if they don't raise the debt ceiling, which I don't believe they're going to do, but we'll see what happens. In a matter of days, millions of of Americans could be strapped for cash. <laughs> Basically saying being poverty, lose the jobs, everything. 
nearly 50 million seniors could stop receiving Social Security checks for a time. Troops could be troops could go unpaid. Millions of families who rely on the monthly child tax credit could see delays. All right. So basically, man, they stop everything. You know. Why federal borrowing limit keeps coming up. The federal debt is the amount of money the government currently owes for spending on payments such as Social Security, Medicare, military salaries, and tax refunds. The debt, oh, that means no tax refunds for everybody. Mm. All right. And they won't be able to pay them pensions. And that's why they get, that's why I believe they're giving everybody, you know, what they're giving them. So they can kill a lot of people off and they won't have to pay them them pensions. It says the debt, the debt limit allows the government to finance those exi- existing obligations. Raising the debt ceiling doesn't authorize additional spending of tax dollars, taxpayer dollars. Instead, when we raise the debt ceiling, we're effectively agreeing to raise the country's credit card balance. All right, so now, that same thing that happened in 2008, okay? where they went to a recession. That's what this can cause, a recession. All right, so... Um, all right, I'm going to read this real quick. However, the budget resolution left out the ceiling entirely. I hate the way, I hate the way these uh, people talk, man. Anyway, and the government will be near the brink of the default just as... Republicans and Democrats face off over how much it is, how much is too much federal spending. All right, so they're going to have a little uh, face off real soon. And that's going to be a distraction. It's a financial game of chicken. All right, and that's the important part. It's a financial game of chicken, right? And they're going to say, what? The chicken is going to come home to roost. That's talking about the dollars. All right. And if they come home to roost, they're going to buy up everything. The dollar's got to go somewhere. So all these houses and these, anything that can be leased, all right, or, or have a title to it, those those dollars that's going to come home to roost from these uh, countries, the major, major holders in dollars, they're going to uh, own everything in America, all right? It says, uh, so let me get to the point. Wow, man. Good. Yep. It says, that in turn would send other borrowing costs higher, including credit cards, car loans, and mortgage rates, all right? <laughs> which generally are pegged to yields on U.S. Treasury notes. At the f- very least, fear of default could rattle the stock market and send shock waves throughout the economy, according to bank rates Hamrick. If you go back to a decade ago, there was an immediate sell-off, which is happening now, is going to happen. Sell-off means there's fear is on the market. Just like in China, they're selling off, right? Um, If you go back to a decade ago, there was an immediate sell-off in the financial markets. It hit investors hard and runs the risk of a cascading financial crisis. We have learned from the past debt limit impasses that waiting until the last minute To suspend or increase the debt limit could cause serious harm. All right, I'm going to end it with this, man, because you have Habakkuk chapter 2 where it speaks about the thick clay of America. 
of Babylon. And that thick clay is what thick uh, uh, debt, all right, D-E-B-T. So it's basically about the default at some point. All right. So how long her that laden herself with thick clay, man? You know, show this endure. And, and they keep trying to kick that can up the road, but at the while, you know, it's, they're going to be going up the hill. It's going to get tougher and tougher. Ezekiel 12 and 22. It says, Son of man, what is that proverb that ye have in the land of Israel, saying the days are prolonged and, and every vision faileth? All right, so a lot of people think, because we're in a time of prophecy, and they think everything is um, not going to happen. But the Lord said in Habakkuk 2, at the end, it shall speak and not lie. All right, and the prophecies are happening, man. So it's prophesied that America is going to, Babylon is going to uh, crash. And, you know, all of the above is going to default, crash, crumble. <laughs> um. Tell them, therefore, thus saith Yahweh, I will make this proverb to cease, and they shall no more use it as a proverb in Israel, but say unto them, the days are at hand, and the effect and the effect of every vision. All right, so everything that the Lord prophesied through his prophets is coming to pass. And and that's the point. It don't matter what Esau does or the Moab. You know, um, tell them, therefore, uh, 24, for there shall be no more any vision, any vain vision, nor flattering divination within the house of Israel, right? All these lies and shit that they're telling in the churches, people like Tazari and them and uh, IUIC, all their false doctrine. The Lord is saying, oh, that's going to stop. And once the prophecy starts speaking, people have to show and prove then. The proof is going to be right there in the pudding. They're saying it's not the it's not the chip, the mark of the beast. Well, we're going to see. But when it get pushed on a world scale because of the world uh, debt ratio or data sheet, all right, when the world defaults on its debt, it's gonna be a world issue when they're gonna to have to have a world one world currency. All right, and they're gonna use the dollar to start it. And switch it to a digital form of it. But they're gonna keep it as the world currency. All right. They're gonna switch it to a digital form to where they gotta apply uh, the chip to it. So let me read this. I got like four percent. It says, uh, so the Lord's going to uh, cause all their lies to cease. People like IUPK or IUIC saying it's not the mark of the beast. Well, it's going to be front and center real soon. Or they say that crash is not going to happen. We got to build up a community here in America. <laughs> or you got these idiots over there, one body saying that Yahweh is not going to come deliver us. Well, shoot, if he don't come deliver us, we, we we don't have no way out of this shit that's coming. Um, for I am Yahweh. I will speak, and the word that I will shall speak shall come to pass. All right? So everything he's speaking is, is coming to pass. Everything he spoke from the beginning. That's second Ezra chapter 9. It goes along with Habakkuk chapter 2. All right, everything he spoke and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. It shall be more, it shall be no more prolonged. For in your days, O rebellious, O rebellious house, talking about two-thirds of our people, will I, will I say the word and will perform it, say if Yahweh power. Again, the word of Yahweh came to me saying, Son of man, behold, they of the house of Israel say, the vision he seeth is for many days to come. Right? It ain't going to happen. And he prophesieth 
of the times that are far off. Therefore, say unto them, all right, we're prophesying about the, the debt and the crash, the economy collapse, uh, World War Three, uh, uh, the, the mark of the beast, right? Martial law, plagues, everything's happening, man. But the main prophecy that's got to happen, as Apostle Har always say, as we always say in this camp, is the mark of the beast got to be pushed on a world scale and then the end shall come, all right? Uh, it says, so they're saying it's, it's far off. That's not going to happen anytime soon. Therefore, say unto them, thus saith Yahweh, power, there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. All right? That's why Esau is moving in that way, because they know they got but a short time coming down with great wrath. All right? Because they know Yahweh shy is about to uh, shut their, uh, they're going to lose their blessing. It's time for Jacob's blessing. All right? So Esau is what? Trying to get their birthright back. Therefore, say it unto them, thus say if Yahweh power, there shall none of my words be prolonged anymore. She's about to intervene. But the word which I have spoken shall be done. Say if Yahweh power, man. So, hey, Yahweh Ratazah, every word that he spoke will come to pass now. You know, the last few prophecies. All right. So he said, now, so, hey, when we in that time, so every word that he spoke is going to just come to pass. He's going to bring it to pass. He's going to intervene and send his holy angels to bring these prophecies to pass, man. They kind of kick the can up the road. No, nah, we're going to raise the debt ceiling. At some point, they're just not going to do it. And this could be that month. All right. You got China and America wrestling for that top spot right now. And China going to win. But ultimately, the children of Israel are going to win. And Esau are going to lose. All right. So, hey, man, look out for that Evergrande. You're going to hear about it today, probably in the news. Evergrande, they're not really, they're going to probably skim over it and keep pushing uh, their propaganda in your face with the lockdowns and all that uh, mandates. And then behind that, you're going to hear about the U.S. debt ceiling that needs to be raised, all right? And watch how China handles their issue compared to how America handles their issue, all right? But the Lord said, what? Well, it's not going to be prolonged anymore. <laughs>